Hi everyone and welcome back to Taste the Code. Today we are continuing with the Palette Burner project where we now work on the settings for the different parameters that we have for the project. This video is partially sponsored by PCBWay. Feel free to visit their website pcbway.com and get your PCB prototypes built and shipped out in just 24 hours for only $5. Not only that you can order PCBs, but you can also have your project assembled by PCBWay. You can order SMD stencils for your projects or create funny shaped projects with their flexible PCBs. Visit pcbway.com today and get your PCB prototypes. So the way that this works, if you haven't seen the previous videos, then go up here. I'll uh, put a link to the playlist for the project. I basically go over each of the modules that you see here, the real time clock, the uh, rotary encoder and the LCD and you can watch that as a separate playlist as a separate video for all of the examples but today I will talk about how I implemented the uh, settings menu that you see here and how we can um, use it and I'll go over the code of what it does uh, this rotary encoder has a switch built in and that switch is connected to interrupt pin 2. So whenever I press on that, the menu is being active for 4 seconds. And if I don't do any update or uh, any change to the menu, then it uh, goes away and returns back to the main screen of the, of the program. When I press it again, it shows the first screen and then with each other press, then it goes and uh, updates the current page. You can have as many as you want, and you can update the value of each of the parameters with the correct unit. So like for ignition time, we have minutes, and stabilization of the flame is also minutes, then the cleaning is minutes, and we have the starting dose, which is in seconds, and we can see how we can configure each of those units uh, separately. Basically, the connection is straightforward. The LCD is connected through I2C using one of these adapter modules. So we're only using two wires for it and two for the power for VCC and ground. And the rotor encoder is connected in such a way that it uses interrupt uh, pin three for the uh, rotary encoder functionality uh, where we actually update the value that we are currently reading and also the switch is connected to uh, pin 2 I'll do a close-up right now pin 2 is connected uh, using this uh, small capacitor for decoupling to interrupt pin D2 and then the rotary encoder is then connected to D3 uh, the input and the red wire goes to the clock signal that we generate. Um, the real-time clock is connected from D7 to D9. On the A4 and IA5 pins, we have the uh, I2C for, for the LED. This current example of uh, how the settings menu is implemented, it's quite let's say basic because it, for example, doesn't take into consideration any minimum or maximum values that we can set for any of the parameters. So there is no validation of the input in any way, uh, but we can easily add that and I'll add that to the final project. But for the sake of this video, I will be kind of keeping it short. The main purpose here is uh, to see in code how we can identify the click of the uh, switch from the rotary encoder and also how we can use that to know where we are. As you can see, all of the values from the settings are being kept in memory currently. So we know each parameter, like for example, cleaning we set to three minutes. Uh, if the settings now reset and we go in, we can see if we go to the cleaning, it still keeps it as three minutes. So we know the settings that are uh, active and set. But currently, if we reset the microcontroller and it goes back um, from the start, then it doesn't know, it doesn't keep any of those settings. And 
for that to be implemented you'll need to use the built-in uh, memory that's uh, within the Arduino and I also have a separate video that I'll link up here and in the video description so go and check that out and now let's see and jump into the code and see what we have um, how we implement these settings before I go into details on the code, I need to give credit to Vladimir Romanov from who I used partially the example that he had on uh, one of his videos on the E Enthusiast channel. I'll leave a link down in the video description if you want to check him out. But um, some of the ideas that I'm using in the code for this example are actually his. And now let's jump into the code. And this is the full example that I have. And you'll see most of this in uh, in the previous videos that I had. Uh, but in today's video, I'll just explain the menu stuff that you see here. At the beginning, we have few variables that we use. And one of the most important ones here is this screens uh, variable, uh, which is a two-dimensional array that uh, uh, actually, it's a it's an array with uh, two uh, parameters each, and as the first uh, part of that array, we have the setting name, and then we have the unit. Basically, in the final example, in the final project, I'll expand this to have multiple parameters where I can also have the default value. Like for example, let's say this one is eighteen minutes, uh, then. I can expand it to have the step that it needs to go up. So for example, this one can go up by one minute. Then I can also add the minimum. Let's say it can be minimum zero and also the maximum of, let's say, 100. These are just an example. To you. So it can give you an idea how you can proceed later on to expand this code. But for this example, we'll keep it simple. And we're only going to have the uh, the name of the settings and the unit that it represents. So basically here in this variable, you will add all of the screens that you want to have in your settings menu. We have a variable that defines how many screens we have in total. So that needs to match with uh, your example. So if you have eight settings, then you will also need to change this one to eight. Uh, we have a variable that uh, keeps the current shown screen, the, the index of the current shown screen, and then we start with minus one because we are not showing anything. And then we have an array that uh, keeps all of our parameters. This correlates with the screens uh, variable where the value of each set parameter is kept there. And then we have a few helper um, variables we have one which is the menu trigger time and that's the one that we use to recognize how long did we press the the, the button before so we know that after four seconds we can turn back to the main screen of the project inside the setup function the new code here is the setup of the pin uh, pin 2 to be kept high using the internal pull-up resistor on the arduino and also the attach interrupt function that we now say to the Arduino to call the trigger menu function each time it sees a falling edge on the pin. And that's basically the falling edge is once we release the switch. Okay, now let's go and see the trigger menu function. Inside we check what's the current menu trigger time and if that is lower than the millis the current milliseconds of execution if that's the case and if the menu trigger time is zero because that's the initial uh, value that we set we set the init position of the rotary encoder so for example if we have the rotary encoder being at the value let's say here 10 uh, when we enter and then exit the menu we want to keep that value but also we want to keep that value even if some of the parameters there are changing so now when i go back it should stay uh, stay 10 and this is where we actually remember the current position that we had 
before we trigger the menu so we can know to return it back. Then we set the current millis of the menu trigger time and we increase the index of the current shown screen because we started from minus one. Uh, the first time when we do this, uh, it will be set to zero. So basically that is the index of the first screen. And here we have one more check if the current screen is bigger or equal to the number of screens. So for example, if we reach the final screen, then make sure that uh, that the value is reset to zero. So we are brought back to the first screen. And as a final uh, variable, we have the update screen variable, which uh, tells the microcontroller that it's now time to update the the screen so we don't basically when we're staying at this position we're not making any updates on the uh, LCD screen unless we have to unless we know that something changed and we need to do that uh, update so here in the trigger menu as you can see we're basically not doing any action but just set the correct flags and correct uh, uh, values for all of the variables that we have and then if we go inside the uh, loop function, basically here, after we check the rotary encoder position, uh, we check if uh, we are in a state that we need to show the menu. So for example, if the menu trigger time is different than zero, and if the current screen is different than minus one, those are the values that we just set inside the um, inside the menu trigger function, we initiate the display menu function. And this function will then, if we need to update the screen, it clears everything, it prints out the settings that we see on the top. And then it goes based on the current screen that we have, it uh, displays the, uh, the setting uh, name as the first row and also it displays the uh, value for that parameter in the second row and then it displays uh, in the same row it displays the unit of that setting that we had and we again mark that as uh, update screen for false so it doesn't go and keeps updating uh, that uh, uh, it keeps updating the LCD and let's go back after the, the LCD is updated with the current state we check if the menu trigger time is plus four seconds or actually 4000 millisecond we check if that is less than the current millis so we know if those four seconds have passed or not and if they did then we basically need to return and reset the LCD position and the LCD screen to the uh, running screen, let's say, where we now set both the menu trigger time and the current screen to minus one. We write the current init position that we saved to the rotary encoder and also reset all of the position values for that. And we now print the position of that uh, rotary encoder value. Uh, we also clean up all of the other uh, values from the LCD and restore it to the basic uh, uh, data that we have. Currently, I just have some basic dummy data, but uh, in the final project that would be replaced with the current state of the attached sensors that we'll have here and temperature probes, so we know what's the state of the uh, pellet burner. Everything else here is basically the same. We have the same init screen and init time functions as before from the previous videos. We have a few helper functions. We have the print position where it prints at the specific line. In this case, it's the second line with, uh, with index zero. It prints the position 10, the position of the rotary encoder. We have a function that actually can clear a certain LCD line and also a function to update the time. And basically that's about it. The most important part here is the interrupt that we have set up to immediately trigger the menu. 
and we have the display menu function that knows to display a specific screen based on the current based on the current screen uh, values and also it knows to display it for how long based on the uh, menu trigger time variable and uh, the final check is to know when to return uh, to displaying the basic screen. As a final example, we'll go and add one more menu to the screen. And so I'll copy the last line and this one can be, let's say, cutoff temperature. And the unit for that will be Celsius. So, and now that we extended the number of screens, we also need to update this value. And I'll go and save and upload that code to the Arduino. So it's compiling, it's uploading. Hopefully we should see it soon. Okay, it's now uploaded. The Arduino will reset. It goes to the initial screen and it goes to the, let's say, working screen, the, the default screen. Uh, we can update the position of the rotary encoder as per usual. And now if we go and enter the settings after the first four that we have, now we have the cutoff temperature and it's now showing what's the temperature that uh, we need to, I don't know, basically cut off any, uh, any more pellets. I'll have a lot of those uh, here, uh, a lot of those settings here that are basically based off uh, one of the commercial pallet burners that I that I own. Um, but uh, this kind of should give you enough of example how you can extend this menu and how you can use it in your own projects. And on that note, I hope that you managed to learn something from this video. And if you did, then please subscribe because it means a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.